let me say very accurately what my activities were on that day from the time I was released from the post market until I ended up at the mansion. First thing I did was once released, I went um, home in search of my family because I wasn't sure. My brother then at the time, uh, he also was in detention. My wife and the kids were, you know, uh, really, they went through that that's history now, but they had their own issues and <coughs> then a foreign lady here with my young son uh, were actually at my uncle's. So I went home first to find out how they were doing because I had heard, in fact, the day that um, uh, she had fallen out at the justice ministry trying to get uh, armored Chesson to issue some permit to see us. Um, she, you know, she, she had uh, been injured and then I guess was uh, taken to the Yale, Yale hospital. So to make a long story short, my first duty was to try to go home, which I did. Second thing I did, and I'd just like to collaborate this with your in a, you know, or inquiry unit because they ask the same question. In prison, uh, uh, you know, in addition to being flocked every morning and every afternoon, they, they put these rolls in your hair, you know, the librarian prison where they cut your hair and put these rolls in it. So I went to my uncle and got a haircut, you know, something like you see now. You know, just cut off the head and make sure my head didn't look that um, uh, prison type situation. It's the second thing I did. The third thing I did was to go from there to come back to the mansion because um, I was, you know, asked to go. When I arrived at the executive mansion, um, I met uh, the late backers and Armo Oscar Jaiquia and um, um, a few others under the Palava hut behind the mansion. The government or the code makers had not moved even into the mansion. The operation was behind the Palava hut. Uh, as I indicated in my in my uh, narrative, uh, within the course of those activities, you know, there are all these rumors about Kanto coup. And, um, you know, the intelligence, all of us being new to government, particularly at that level. Remember, until this time, I was only an assistant minister. Or I hadn't even attended cabinet meetings. In fact, the only time that I had an opportunity to attend a, a, a meeting that was more or less for cabinet type was after the rights rights in 1979 when a lot of ministers, you know, were particularly my ministry. Uh, Minister Blama was out, uh, Minister Norman, who was deputy for instructor, Christine Torbert Norman, she was out. And, you know, I was really the only person in the ministry at the time, and that was the only time I even had access to anything in terms of how the government worked until they reappeared. So the, the intelligence sector, I had no idea really how it worked. But from what we heard on the ground that morning to the afternoon about uh, uh, alleged counter coup by Major Willem Jabo, okay, uh, the information, the sources of information, in fact, first, the first thing the U.S. Embassy did after the coup was to deliver handsets to you know, radio communication to be able to communicate with the with with them on developments, um, and um, the source of the information by Jabuku uh, actually sounded a lot more credible. And so, when the PRC decided to send professional soldiers to go after the um, the Jabu arrangement, and in my own case, the fourth thing that that I did that day was, was what I told you to proceed to Bento. So, as to how the, as to what actually transpired, uh, the circumstances actually involving the, 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 the overthrow of the government uh, concerns and, uh, you know, bits and pieces of information about which I really cannot say definitively what transpired, who did what within what time frame. Everything as far as I'm concerned is speculative and I wouldn't want to leave this commission or leave with any impression 
that I had any definitive information as to what transpired up until the morning that I arrived at the executive mansion. 